A real pleasure to be here. I just want to say thank you very much to the hardworking organisers for having such a good conference once again. Uh, earlier today, you would have heard uh, my colleague Peter Rowley talking about some of the exciting pipeline uh, opportunities that we have in the state southeast, as well as some exploration opportunities around Camman 2. Today, though, I'm going to be focusing on our core asset, which is the Camman 2 underground copper gold mine. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, a Camman 2 mine site is located about 55 kilometres from Adelaide between the townships of Murray Bridge and Mount Barker. Uh, it was a mine that was mined uh, by Hillgrove Resources from 2011 to 2020, producing some 137,000 tonnes of copper during that period, as well as 55,000 ounces of gold. The, uh, the loads that were mined during the open pit during that stage are all very steeply dipping. They continued through the base of the economic pits, and over the last uh, a few years, we have been undertaking drilling programs to determine whether we could create an underground uh, mine below the base of the pits, and uh, the drilling results to date have been really pleasing, and they do demonstrate that we have adequate uh, grade, continuity and width to be able to sustain uh, an underground development, so much so that we have cr uh, commenced a, a decline, which you can see here on the screen, utilising some relatively um, new uh, technology that's being put together by Komatsu, which uh, I'm going to talk to as we work through this slide pack, but really has the opportunity to... I I guess creates a mine development uh, that is safer, faster, more cost efficient and greener. So let's jump in. Uh, from a corporate snapshot point of view, won't spend too long on this slide, but Hillgrove has a market cap in the order of about $64 million, we got $14 million in the tin as we stand at the moment following a successful oversubscribed capital raise uh, a few months ago, and that sees us fully funded now to be able to not only finish the decline that you saw there, but also uh, complete about a 16,000 metre drilling program uh, and associated studies so that we can reach a final investment decision by about the middle of next year with the intent of then mining shortly uh, thereafter. A couple of things I will just point your attention to on this slide, however, uh, about $190 million in carried forward tax losses, um, which obviously as we get into the free cash flow generation from the underground become extremely valuable, as well as about $17 million in franking credits, which enable us to push out about a $50 million uh, fully franked dividend into the future. The Camman 2 uh, copper mine is a very unique value proposition. It's a very low risk project, low capital intensity, quick speed to market um, with plenty of uh, resource upside. So just quickly, it's a fully permitted operation. Um, it enjoys really strong support from the local townships of Callington and Camman too. And all the infrastructure that we need to put this into place is already there. Um, so that includes a 3.6 million tonne per annum process facility, as well as a fully operational and permitted tails dam. And we keep these primary assets in a ready start position such that there isn't a massive refurbishment cost or timeline to get these up and running. It's essentially a replacement of uh, inventories that's been drawn down over the last couple of years and we're up and running. And it's this infrastructure, I guess, coupled with the very short distance from the development portal that you saw going in at the, the start of this slide deck to the first parts of the mineralised ores or loads. So about 40 metres of development is required to cross those uh, mineralised load systems. So very short timeline and low cost to, to get this operation up and running. In addition to this, the technical risk is really low as well. So these are the same ore loads that we mined for about a decade uh, through the open pit process. So it's the same geology, it's the same geotechnical conditions, the same metallurgical uh, inputs as well. So effectively, this is like a restart with just a different mining methodology. And from a resource point of view, we've, we've already drilled 17,000 metres just this year alone, predominantly focused below uh, the, the main pit itself. And what we're seeing there is a resource that is uh, extending for at least 500 metres below the base of the open pit, so some eight to 900 metres below surface, and it's all open at depth, so plenty of resource upside there. So I did speak about the infrastructure just briefly in, in, in the context of it being a huge benefit in terms of compressing the timeline and reducing that capital cost to get up and running. But in addition to that, at 3.6 million tonne per annum, the process capacity was scaled really to match the open pit profile, and it's much larger than what we require for an underground operation, at least initially. And I guess this puts Hillgrove in a very unique position such that we could quickly respond to changing copper price environments and scale up the productivity by optimising the head grade to maximise the value of the mineral resource. And we can do this without any additional permitting and any additional capital cost. And I guess this is zero cost optionality to be able to respond to changing commodity prices to get the most out of the ore body um, that is unique to Camman 2 and it's hugely valuable. 
From a drilling point of view, um, it's as I said before, it's predominantly been focused below the main pit, which is shown there in grey. Um, and we've had some excellent uh, results, maybe a little bit difficult to see um, from your seats, but yeah, 170 metres, 1% copper. That was followed shortly thereafter with another 166 metres, about 0.9% copper. And I guess these were aggregated uh, intersections that were made up of multiple loads in the order of about 10 to 30 metres true width, ranging from 1 to 3% copper. And I guess these higher grade zones, they were interspersed with uh, lower grade mineralisation. And this just demonstrates, I guess, the potential to materially increase the mining inventory by lowering the head grade and going to a bulk mining approach, which as I mentioned in the previous slides, there is plenty of uh, processed plant capacity to be able to handle that and that we can upscale that without additional capital expenditure. Also importantly, the image on the right just illustrates how many of the drill holes that have been put in place just this year alone sit outside of the mineral resource estimate, which is shown there in the red and blue sort of blocks. Uh, so many of these holes are sitting outside of that resource estimate. We're currently compiling an update to the mineral resource estimate, which we anticipate will be released to market in the next couple of weeks. And as you can see, with so many holes sitting outside, both a long strike and down dip, we would anticipate to see a material increase in the uh, mineral resource below the uh, base of the main pit. The image on the screen now is a long section of the known load systems at Camman 2. Um, as before, most of the drilling this year, so the 17 kilometres that's been completed this year already, has really focused below the base of the pit in the green section that's shown on the slide, with some limited drilling just chasing a bit of the strike extensions and some depth extensions, just, just demonstrating that the depth continuity is there and we are able to confirm that uh, you know, 500 metres below the base of the pit, we still have resources that, uh, that are open. But uh, this is only a small fraction of what the opportunity at Camman 2 is. So what we have done is raise this additional money. We've started another 16,000 metre program, and, uh, and that is really aimed at identifying um, some additional areas, bringing them into the initial mine plan, such that we can increase the annual throughput at the beginning of operations from next year and better utilise the latent mill capacity that we have. So just looking at these areas really quickly, um, we have Southwest Cavanagh and Spitfires Hollowed here in orange. Um, these were areas that were mined as part of the open pit. They disappeared outside of the pit. We have done some drilling just this year that confirms that uh, these mineral loads are still extending with uh, adequate width and grade to support underground mining at least 130 metres below the base of the pit and all open at depth. So we'll be doing some additional drilling with the intent to bring them into the mine plan. As you can see, they're very close to the Cavanagh loads. The blue line that goes across the bottom of the pit there, there is, that is the uh, development decline that we're putting in place at the moment. So as we start to bring these into the mine plan, very low incremental capital cost to get these into the schedule um, and increase the annual throughput. Further to the south, we have Nugent. Nugent was a pit that was mined 2015 to a depth of about 100 metres. It's a higher grade gold tenor, uh, typically ranges in the order of about 8 to 15 metres, 1 to 2 per cent uh, copper, but also 1 to 2 grams per tonne gold in that area as well. We've done some drilling there in 2020, confirming that this mineral load system continues down about 200 metres below the base of the pit. It's open at depth, and we've just uh, focusing our drilling campaign, which started about a month ago on this area with the intent to bring this into the initial mine plan before we start. And in doing that, uh, what we are able to do is to have a second work area separate to uh, Kavanagh, still relatively low capital to get in. There's only about 150 metres worth of development capital to get that established. But by having a second work area, obviously able to increase that annual uh, throughput and better utilise that existing milling infrastructure. And just finally, uh, North Kavanagh is another area that we will be looking at um, as part of this uh, next few months' worth of drilling program. North Kavanagh was an area that we did mine a couple of benches of as we came through the open pit, but it's relatively skinny, steeply dipping. So from an open pit strip ratio point of view, we didn't go down too far on that area. But we did do some extensive drilling just to demonstrate how far it went along strike. And what we're seeing there is a nice little load system ranging in the order of about uh, 7 to 10 metres in width, uh, 1.8 to 2% uh, copper with a nice half gram per tonne gold credit. So another little uh, load system that could be brought in as an independent work area. So as you can see, uh, I guess the 16-kilometre the program that we've just started on now is really aimed at bringing in some additional areas to uh, complement the Kavanagh work area such that we can really increase our annual throughput um, before we restart next year.
As I talked about at the start of the presentation, uh, the decline into Kavanagh is underway. So this is a picture of it. Uh, the orange area that's shown there is the decline that's going into place. Um, and the intent of this initially is to establish a number of drilling platforms from which we can then undertake the stope definition drilling and bring that off of the critical path. So stope definition drilling here, shown in red, obviously is a higher uh, degree than what we do for mineral resource estimation. It's really getting to that engineering level of confidence. But as we continue to do that work and continue to improve that uh, geological confidence, that just de-risks the project further and it makes it, when we get to the middle of next year, hitting that investment decision point, it makes that capital hurdle and getting banks on board for that debt finance a lot easier to, to achieve once that work is done. And obviously by build, doing this work early, it enables us to bring it off that critical path, um, which then just brings forward copper production. And of course, having a 500 odd metre decline already in place, it does couple as future mine access. So that also brings forward uh, future mine development. The portal in the initial 500 metres is being cut with a Komatsu MC51 continuous mining machine, and this utilises Komatsu's Dynacut technology. So the decline is being developed under trial conditions with a view to demonstrate the commercial viability of hard rock mechanical cutting machines. So mechanical cutting, it really, really has the potential to revolutionise the way that underground mine development is carried out by making operations safer, faster, more cost efficient and greener. And I just want to take a few moments to work through, I guess, some of these key benefits in a bit more detail. So just taking safety first, I guess, despite best efforts, uh, rock falls and underground mines have been responsible for just far too many serious injuries and, and fatalities. And the technology that we're trialling at the moment with the continuous miner is really seeking to reduce this by eliminating blasts from the mine development process and thereby just creating much better ground conditions. And in addition to that, it also removes, it reduces the number of people, it also removes them from the high potential rockfall areas. In addition, worker safety is also enhanced through this process by less dust generation. There is uh, less manual labour involved in the whole process. Um, and as a fully electrical machine, there is obviously a lot less exposure to fine diesel particulates. In terms of quality, the performance to date has been exceptional, as you can see um, on the picture there. Uh, the backs, the, the face, the walls, they're extremely clean. And the laser guidance system, I guess, coupled with a 50 mil tolerance on cutting accuracy, has just ensured that the portal location and the profile is exactly as per our design requirements. And design is an interesting one to actually consider in all of this. Um, over time, it's, it's pretty reasonable to consider this type of technology could actually change the way in which an underground mine is designed. I mean, for example, we've already cut a notch just in the side of the wall there, you can see on the left-hand side, just to house some services that would otherwise be exposed or, or put on the backs. But, you know, this is just tip of the iceberg type stuff. Consider what you could do with things like drainage design or pillar design or draw point design um, if we're no longer constrained to the limitations of drill and blast precision and we're no longer having to factor in things like overbreak and blast related damage. The cost and uh, productivity point of views, uh, I guess they are best uh, des described, I guess, by looking at uh, the change that uh, this technology makes to the overall process. So up on the screen at the moment is just a, a typical, uh, I guess, process showing the, the drilling, the charging, the blasting, inspection, bog, scale, mesh, bolt, prep, you know, repeat. That's the current process that most mines are undergoing at this point in time for development headings. Each one of these activities is done in series, so one has to finish before the next one can start, and by the time you get to the whole end of this cycle, we've cut three to four metres worth of rock. In contrast, the continuous mining process that's being trialled at Camman 2 at the moment is really aiming to undertake the cutting and the ground support in parallel, such that the process doesn't stop, it just keeps moving forward. So by obviously removing these advancement delays for development blasts as well as uh, stopping for ground support, the productivity is expected to increase. And also by simplifying the, the process, reducing the number of activities, there's a lot less cost. There's less people, there's less equipment, less ground support requirements because of the, the better ground conditions, less ventilation because of reduced uh, particulates and, and dust in the whole system, less downstream processing, less overbreak, less dilution, and, and the list goes on. So last week already, we've just uh, advanced uh, the five and a half metre decline profile, a metre in under two hours. And that's a really small sample size, uh, but the production potential is clearly there. 
But uh, productivity and cost at this stage in the trial is just something that we're really yet to quantify. And, and one of the main reasons for that is at the moment we're still developing a portal. This machine is made to actually jack itself against the back, so against the roof of the, the decline that it's uh, putting in place. And so obviously as we're developing a portal, there is no backs to be able to jack up against. Um, so we fabricated some steel rails just to lock the tracks in place so there is no lateral movement. Um, and I, I guess in doing so, we're utilising the machine, not in the way it's you know, really intended to be used. So we're just not really pushing that advancement rate re fast at this point in time. But uh, next few days, we will be in far enough to be able to jack against the backs appropriately. And then we would start to see those uh, uh, advancement rates really ramp up. But this is a trial, so success is not really just measured on cut rate alone. It's also essential that the ground support can actually occur at the same time of cutting, because for this technology to supplant um, the, the existing drill and blast methods, uh, we're, we're going to need to demonstrate that it is a continual process. And so the trial we're conducting really does enable Komatsu to refine the design of the ground support unit, which is shown here in grey as a conceptual sort of design, but it needs to be developed, it needs to be trialled in the field prior to commercialisation of yeah, continuous hard rock cutting. And on the environmental side, look, I'm sure everyone in this room is fully aware that copper is one of the key minerals the world is going to need um, if it wants to decarbonise through electrification. But what about the impact from an environmental point of view that copper mining actually creates? In 2020, the uh, International Copper Association commissioned a report from the Warren Centre to develop a strategic roadmap to achieve a zero emission copper mine of the future. The report identifies a number of in areas that industry need to focus on in its quest for zero emission mining, and they refer to these as emission impact themes. But they really just include discovery, ventilation, water, processing, and materials handling. Um, with all of these, there's you know, time horizons. They range from just adopting you know, off-the-shelf near-term technologies in a different manner through to you know, technological breakthroughs into the future. It then goes on to list about 60 specific emission-reducing projects that industry, government, think tanks, venture capital, etc., should really start focusing on to achieve this ultimate goal. Now, mechanical cutting through a continuous mining machine, like I've been talking about, is not on that list. But I would argue that the Komatsu MC51 continuous mining machine, which runs on 100% electricity, is a genuine step change towards an emission-free mining future, particularly as renewables uh, make up an ever-increasing percentage of the energy mix. And the trial at CAMMAN 2 is really designed to bring that future forward. Another interesting uh, point that the Warren Centre's report makes is that an ambitious goal like zero emission mining really needs a number of enablers. So these include correct policy settings, they include risk capital, uh, an innovative mindset, and also an incentive for the trial participants, such as you know, Hillgrove in this case, in order for these ideas to really advance from concept to reality. Um, and I guess the continuous mining trial at CAMMAN 2 is a case in point. The trial simply would not have got off the ground without the combined support of the South Australian Government uh, that committed to contribute a $2 million grant towards uh, this, this project, as well as Komatsu, who have thrown in their own money but also have structured a deferred and contingent uh, payment terms with Hillgrove such that there is no cash outflow for Hillgrove to develop this decline uh, unless the uh, underground mining gets funded and goes ahead. This enables basically Hillgrove um, to essentially get the decline in for very little upfront capital outlay, uh, which further then accelerates what is already a very short time to first copper, and at the same time just enables industry to, uh, I guess, test uh, this type of technology for, for future benefit. So if you're not familiar with the Warren Centre's report and you're interested in supporting a, a zero emissions mining future, it is worth a read. But in addition, for any of the miners in the room that are interested to understand how you might be able to deploy a continuous cutting type technology at your own mines, make contact, come up to Ham at Camman 2 and have a look at this machine in action. From a timeline point of view, Grey bars are complete, orange is either underway or, or needs to go to first copper production. So effectively, the first couple of orange bars there, um, we are, are basically the 16,000 metre drill program as well as the decline, both of which are underway. And we fully anticipate to have that work done and uh, put into a context that we can then make a final investment decision by the middle of next year. And as I've talked about, it's a very short time frame from that point through to first copper ore. So just to summarise, uh, the Kanban 2 Underground presents a very low risk, low cost, near term production opportunity. Plenty of upside uh, with copper prices expected to remain high as the world continues to decarbonise. 
and plenty of exploration upside as well, both to increase mine life, but also importantly, the annual production rate. So with all the capital infrastructure and permitting already in place and a bullish outlook for copper, Hillgrove is very well positioned to establish Australia's next copper mine. Thanks very much for your time.